Oh yeah, me podcast. You listen back from hiatus, taking time off, getting back to the boys. See what the boys have been doing over the summer. Gesture here with my buddy MC. Hello, Gesture. How are you, buddy? Doing good. It's been a weird summer, but things have gone through. Yeah, scrappy here. Not to bring anybody down, but we're trying to turn it around here and lift everybody's spirits by returning for another fine episode of Me Podcast You Listen. Yeah, Me Podcast You Listen. Only brought to you by the sponsors of Nobody because nobody sponsors us. So if you'd like to sponsor Me Podcast You Listen, feel free to. You can throw some money our way and we'll buy some nicer equipment. Maybe we'll buy a TV camera. So We've been known to just plug people and things for no reason. So why not sponsor us and make it a regular thing? Yeah, we were plugging our buddy uh, Rock, the Ram Rock for SCW. So I haven't talked to yeah, him in we a can't while. Make- can't make it, but hopefully our next uh, time we're talking about, well, anything. The Rock wants to join us for just non-wrestling related stuff too, which is what this episode is. But unfortunately, he is a bit tied up with work. He's a busy man, and uh, he couldn't make it this episode. He is a busy man. He's the busiest guy in the world traveling from Germany <laughs> to America. Having to wrestle, that's a long way to go to get some wrestling in. Guess he's not wrestling oh, yeah. any bears. And I think before this uh, mass type of stuff, he just would hide out in the, the animal cargo and just sneak himself in in a cage. And he, did, <laughs> he didn't have to follow any restrictions. He would just get to Germany from uh, however may, means necessary. And he, and he would show up at wrestling shows and beat people up. He dressed like a bear. He dressed in a bear suit. <laughs> just showing up. <laughs> Some may say that the mountains of Germany look just like northern Arizona, but I would not say that. Yeah, I would say the same thing. It's amazing. When you when you see him, you may see him standing in front of what looks like Brule Ridge High School. So, I don't know. Is that mountain, the North Mountains? I don't know. So, anyways. I think it's just a, uh, a weird coincidence. It's just guess. weird. Yeah, I guess. When you see <laughs> kids wearing vans. I don't think they have vans in Germany. Oh, what the hell in Germany? I don't know. They have freedom, thank goodness. How yeah, yeah. you know, many years ago? Okay. The, the Ramrock comes from the old school of of the tough mountains of Germany. I'm not really sure <laughs> what, what era he thinks he's in because he obviously, I think he he's part Viking. He doesn't even own he doesn't even own a vehicle for some reason. It's 2022, but in Germany just, where he lives, he just runs at full speed to shows and he just rams people and takes their titles. <laughs> And then jumps on the bend of a, a, back, a, a back of a wagon full of animal pelts and just rides away. Heaven forbid you might be a pastor because he'll just run you and your church over and take your title and your money and your federation. Everything. He'll take Smash your offering. Smash into a million pieces. Your offering plate. Everything. <laughs> uh, good times. We miss Pastor Andy and... And hopefully our good buddy, the Ramrock, will Pastor, join us next time. Pastor Andy. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like when we say Pastor Andy, it sounds like a cartoon character? Pastor Andy. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that the name of uh, the kid from uh, Toy Story? <laughs> yeah. pa- Pastor Andy and his side pa- assistant, Pastor Boo Winkle, are all here today. Ramrock Woody and his manager, uh, Buzz Pierre. Lightyear. Woody. It would Beating be up Woody. Logan Woody. Cage. <laughs> Beating Woody. up Logan Cage in Flagstaff. <laughs> the only one with a normal name, Logan Cage. <laughs> Logan, whatever other characters are in the movie Toy Story, <laughs> I do not remember any. Uh, Logan, whatever the, what it was, the, wasn't there a dog or a slinky or whatever? Spike. What the hell was that thing's name? Spike oh, Logan oh. Spike Cage. <laughs> no, I don't know what the do- <laughs> dog. I think the dog's name was Slinky. I don't know what the hell the dog's name was. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, he had a Slinky stomach, didn't he? Or Spe- something, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a Slinky. I don't think it was necessarily his stomach. It was his appendix. Uh, he was his dog that got uh, surgery and had a Slinky put inside of him, so he became a robot Slinky dog. <laughs> so now he's spe- merged with Logan Cage. Speaking of movies. 
Have yes. you been watching any of the movies that came out lately? The uh, I've caught a couple of them. We we discussed a little bit off air before we decided to do the show. Uh, uh, I think. I think the last technical well, I rewatched Thor, which is old, but I seen Hustle on Netflix. That's not that old, right? Hustle with Adam Sandler. No, that's brand new. How'd you like it? I never seen yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was interesting. Um I guess he was <laughs> he was uh, <laughs> I mean I thought I might like it a little more because just the usually he you know, he puts himself and I think he was with Kevin Garnett in that uh that movie where he's a jeweler. So I thought maybe it might oh, be the, some, you know, similar feel to that, but it was more of a lighthearted kind of underdog type story where he's looking for talent. He's a scout apparently, but he wants to become a, a coach. Basically he wants to go on a bench and I forget the name of the old actor that plays the owner of the team. So I'm going to spoil too much. I don't want to spoil too much, but essentially right at the beginning, he makes Adam Sandler a coach, assistant coach. And now he's finally getting out of scouting, but then the guy dies and then his son takes over, who's a dick, and basically has to go back to being a scout to find basically the next big star for the Philadelphia 76ers because it takes place, you know, in, I guess, Philly or whatever. But he's going all over the place. And, yeah, I mean, it's not the not the best Adam Sandler movie. But uh, it got know, seven, I, I still I finished it. 7.4 out of 10 stars. Not the See, greatest I'm surprised rating. at that. Why? So think yeah. It got I don't know. I, no, I, I think I would have put it at a six, but I don't. I don't know. I just, yeah. I mean, it's kind of. I think he. And I want to say the guy's a slacker because there was one guy. I, I think he's just trying to. I guess the. And hopefully, if anybody wants to watch it, so see, so Scott finds this like street hustler kind of, who's a, like he's a tall. He's a real basketball player. I, I forget his name now. Uh, if he's really from. Spain or whatnot, but he finds this kid and he's a stud basically. And then he's trying to convince him, but the kid has a checkered pass. So it becomes a, a story of, can he get this guy drafted in there? It doesn't quite end how you might expect or whatnot, but um, I mean, overall it's, was the, I mean, it has was a the character's name, Bo. Yeah. Was it like Bo Sant? His was, name is, Bo his, name, Sanchez. his real name is Juan, Juancho. Hern, Hern <laughs> Gomez. <laughs> Hern Gomez. That's right. Yes. Yeah, that, that name sounds, sounds familiar. Yeah, it was Bo Cruz. That was his name, I that think, was in the, the film, right? That was the character. In the yeah, movie. that was the character's name, Bo Cruz. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Am I saying, I his, name, as, am I saying his name wrong? Is Wancho not a, a Wancho not a name? That is probably correct. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Let's just go with it. And if, if Wancho. <laughs> Ever Wancho, listen to our show, Juan, you can correct us. Juan Alberto <laughs> Hern Gomez is yeah. a Spanish professional basketball player who's last played for the Utah Jazz. Yes, that's a name. That's a team. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything else. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, don't, if you have don't nothing spoil, else. Don't spoil such a bad movie with Adam Sandler in it. No. <laughs> you know, it's not no, like. No, I mean, if there's nothing else to watch, you can. There you go. If there's uh, nothing else. It, yeah. If you don't have anything else to do and you find yourself <laughs> bored, watch this movie. That's I would watch saying, Stranger right? Things. Pro- yeah, Stranger. if you're watching Netflix, Stranger. I would probably catch up on Stranger Things before watching Hustle. Let's put it that way. Which I did. So you watched Stranger Things before you watched The Hustle? No, no, no. Um, I think the hype of Stranger Things 4, I think season 4, I think that hadn't quite got me yet. And I think I had watched Hustle right before it. Because I figured, well, here's another 12 episodes or whatnot. I, I don't even know how many they were. And I'm like, I get through this season. But apparently, I don't know if it was like 6 or 7 before a little hiatus. And then I think it just picked up on July I don't want to say second or whatnot. The final two episodes were like hour or whatever plus episodes. And yeah, I finished them up the other day. Did you watch, um, did you see, uh, this stranger things? Have you, did you, have you seen the first season? Yeah, I have, I had seen all three seasons up to that point. Uh, oh, so there's two, I know, more, there's two more seasons of stranger things. Yeah. I just, yeah. I think, I think I was just wondering what, I mean, it did leave in a cliffhanger. I do remember that, you know, I didn't remember a whole heck of a lot. I know they set up stuff for season four. It's just, 
I don't know. I would guess I was figuring what else can they do now. And so I wasn't jazzed up for this five, fourth season, but my brothers and cause I guess their nieces watch, get them into shows and such. So they were hyping it up. Oh, this is great. And it's, you know, my brother was saying, yeah, it reminds me a lot of the evil dead type aspects. And I'm like, I didn't get that from it before, but the eighties vibe is cool. Cause both you and me, you know, we lived through the eighties. So, um, yeah, it was fun. I, I, I didn't regret watching Did it. You, I think, uh, uh it was good. Go back to Hustle. Do you think Hustle, yeah. which one's better, Hustle or Blue Chips with Nick Nolte? Oh, shit. It, it's been a while since I've seen Blue Chips. Uh, Blue Chips is like Top Gun. I've seen it once, and I don't remember anything <laughs> <laughs> about it, and I know we're going to talk about Top Gun. But, yeah, that's one of those things where I do remember seeing it, but I don't remember anything else. You don't remember so nothing I would say, in Blue Chips? You remember nothing? No, uh, I actually remember. I remember the soundtrack. Blue Chips is with a sports. It's a sports story, isn't it? It's a college. And that one too. He's recruiting for college. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I didn't see it. Maybe I just remember the. I've got the soundtrack for the Mountain Camp song. I think this is and, where this is where know. we're gonna go back down MC's past and found out he never. <laughs> he used to play with ants and squirrels in his house, and he never saw TV until he was in his twenties. <laughs> Hey, I'm not playing with the ants in your wall. Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's a whole episode. You know, um, Blue Chips. Blue Chips did that. Why do I keep thinking Shaquille O'Neal in that? He's in it. Did he star in he's that? He's in it. Yeah. yeah, it's when the college yeah. kids come and they try to hustle. Yeah. They have to hustle these kids to play basketball, and Nick Nolte has to pay these guys to play for college basketball. You don't remember this movie? I, there is, no, it is very possible. So again, I that, remember everything if, about it except the movie itself. So out of ba- <laughs> out of basketball out of basketball movies, <laughs> which one's better, The Hustle or Hoosers? Ooh, now I see we didn't discuss that we were going to be talking did about you, basketball movies did before you this. Or not? Come on, Hoosers. I don't or... remember. I don't think I've seen Hoosers. To be honest with you, I'm I'm old enough to have seen it, but that's with Gene Hackman, isn't it? All right, Space Jams. I've seen probably the one with Jordan once, but no, not the one with LeBron. Hustle or Space Jams with Jordan? I think Space Jams was more fun. So, and plus it's Jordan. I, mean, I don't give a fuck what Jordan's doing in there. I'm going to be a little biased being a Chicago one, but Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Oh yeah, was <laughs> was Scotty Pippen in it? I don't remember. I don't remember Scottie Space it. Jams. Okay, maybe that's why he's so salty with his book. Scotty Pippen is, you know, he takes a lot of shots at Jordan. And How about like, if it's um, hustle? We're going through all sports hustle, movies. Hustle. Or like Major or, League or is, like Mike with uh, when he buys the uh, when Bow Wow buys the uh, Jordan shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm, one? Which I'm probably going to say most everything is probably better than Hustle. <laughs> 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 not, so I'm, we, I'm not bashing a film. It's just so we don't want to see. It this was movie. okay. No, it was like an average. It's like an average movie. It's like if you're bored. You got some popcorn, you're sitting down. What the fuck are we going to watch today? But you got to have popcorn if you want to watch it. Probably. Yeah, no no, Why not? no, milk duds. You got milk duds dude, they for fu- not watching this movie. Dude, a 20, here, get this. I know this is a little off topic here, but a 24 pack of popcorn, which used to be a few bucks, $8 now. At Inflation a movie, through at the a roof. Movie theater? No, at home. If you're in a store. So I noticed that one store, we'll just, we'll name names. Fuck it. So at Walmart, the, they had raised they kept raising it so first i think it was like six hours and something now it was already raised now i think it was up to eight or nine dollars and then i seen this like their generic brand and then i seen targets and i'm like fuck this thing is 24 is what the hell's going on this is 379 that's like eight or nine dollars so i bought a few i'm like i better get this because if i like popcorn i'm not gonna be buying it for nine dollars and sure enough target jumped theirs up to i think you know what i blame the movie hustle books so. I blame the movie Hustle because yeah. no one wanted to see it. Why not? No one wanted to see it in the theater, so they took it straight to Netflix. And they're not making the movie anymore in the theater, so they're trying to get, make money off the popcorn. So let me ask you this. Uh, are you in favor, especially having gone through this sh- quarantine shit, are you in favor of movies being released to stream at the same time of theaters, or are you saying 
no, this is going to kill the movie business. So they need to have a release first. And then like Batman, then you stream it like 45 days later. What are you in favor of personally? You know, I'm glad you asked that question because yes. I've been sitting around thinking about it, thinking about the old days with movie houses and Charlie Chaplin and all those times that everybody would want to go out and see movies. And you sit there and you think, why wouldn't you want to go to a theater? It's it's the old days. And so when you think about it, what they're doing now is they're taking away the social aspect of everybody going out. And they're taking away. So let me get my music going. Oh. So movies. So you're going to play it. 2001 Odyssey. Movies for a back in the day. <laughs> Movies back in the day were very fun. And you wanted to go and sit in a theater with your family and have a big bowl of popcorn and watch the show. And then you sat down and you realized you forgot the milk duds and you had to get back up and get in line and pay your quarter. Or if you were like us, you just hid, you hid the milk duds in your pants. And that way when you got in there, they were nice and warm and they weren't stuck together. And you watched the theater and you saw the previews and you saw your friends and everything was fun. But now, COVID happens and no one wants to go to the damn theaters because they're afraid something's going to happen to them. And you're taking away the whole social aspect of the public going out and interacting with each other. So for me, these people spend a lot of money. They go out and they want to see the theater and they want you to go in and have a good time enjoying the previews. I've noticed. Yeah, it see this commercial like right here. So, <laughs> me, to me, it's it's taking away the uh, social part of people going out and actually having a good time. You want to dress up, you want yeah. to go to theaters, you want to hang out. No, I mean, it, it's nice that you could sit at home and watch shows, but if you're going to do that, then you got to wait for it to come out on video, just like you used to in the 80s when you used to hang out. So, to me... That's a good point. I just Fair think point. that it's people are spending money on making movies i think you should support it and go out and see it and here's the thing i mean there's two ways of looking at it and i could play devil's advocate there i mean how much money do these fucking maniacs need you know because i was looking at people who left tv shows or movie franchises and stuff i forgot how i stumbled across that a rabbit hole of that but i was like looking at some of the episodes what it was like an article of like how much they lose by not continuing on as their character and such and such. And I thought that I could have swore I seen the, like that uh, CSI girl, the goth girl, it said something like 25 million. She walked away from to leave the series because she wasn't getting along with Mark Harmon because he brought a dog on the set and a bit of crew member or some shit. And I'm like, I get that, that yeah, they're long hours. And some of the people left those shows because they, they had no life. But they're making millions, hundreds of thousands of hours, millions. Like, I'm not saying, like, do a split release, but maybe if it comes out the following weekend on streaming. Are they not allowed to make money, MC? No, I'm not saying that. But, like, how much <laughs> how much more do they need to eat from the top of the food chain than me and you, Coach GC? Why, Why not? That, that they need to have this released for weeks before anybody can stream it at home. That's not mine to what say. What about... If I was going to get paid extra for doing something, I'd be like, yeah, all over it. I'm sure there's people out there that say, dude, you don't deserve to get paid crap for what you do. And I think that's just my business. If someone's going to buy it and someone's going to pay for it and someone's going to pay me to do it, then I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think there's always going to be somebody who's going to pay for something. So if you said. I'm not going to pay $8, or I said, I'm not going to pay $8 for this popcorn. Well, somebody's going to pay $8 for the popcorn. Otherwise, it's going to reduce in price. It's the same thing I think we're having to talk about gas. If Long somebody keeps is, buying gas, right? right. yeah, then it's, they're going to keep raising the price of it. Yeah. Supply and so demand. We're, kind of, we're kind of fucked as long as people keep going to the, oh, you're on the movie theater side. I'm like, I liked watching uh, The Suicide Squad at home when I had HBO Max. I'm not going to lie. I would rather have on that not not because i had an ex coworker whose wife was afraid to go to theaters thinking every time something was released somebody might get shot in a theater i'm not thinking that but i like to watch it on my tv in the comfort of my own home why would i want to sit there and then get you, packed like sardines in the theater you, and when then, i can just watch it at all then you got to wait till it comes out on video or comes out on stream 
and you got to listen to someone talk about it on their podcast and ruin it for you. So when you get it, <laughs> you know that you've seen it. So that's just the way. So it used I need to be. to be punished because I yeah. won't go to a drive-in theater or a yeah movie <laughs> yeah. theater. To, you don't to see anything. You don't want to follow. You don't want to be a part of the majority. Then you can't enjoy the uh, majority. What the majority is enjoying. So if you don't want to go to the so theater, the, so the actors and actresses and everybody involved with the film can make bazillions of dollars. Trillions, trillions of dollars. So they have a plane. So when you see them in public and they walk by and you say, excuse me, excuse me. And they say, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. Don't bother me. You say, damn it. I am not going to buy a ticket to your show ever again. I will not see Top Gun for ever if Tom Cruise doesn't but, talk to me. But then there will be that guy like the one I work with who will see it four times in the theaters. So he'll make up for you and two other people. Yeah, that's just the nature of the business, man. I don't know what to tell you. you yeah. You went and bought tickets to see Sebastian, was it Sebastian Matakasko or whatever his name is? yes, yeah, I did. You went and bought him, tickets, man. so you know what? He's got billions of dollars. He's got his own pool, his own plane. Sheesh, you paid tickets. Why did you do that? You, Why didn't you, you know just what wait he says? for the yeah, audio you know review? You know what he says? You know what he says then, too? And, I, you know, he'll he'll say, I don't control Ticketmaster's ticket prices. He he sets what he needs to get from it, and then they, yeah, they jack up the price of it, too, so. That's right. Yeah, people Every, can choose not to go see him too. Yeah, everybody's got to make money. Sometimes and they need to make remember, a lot more money. And you remember, he may be. <laughs> on, that's the thing about the movie business is they're making money now, but in five years from now, they're not making any money because no one's interested. So they're making as much as they can because they may not be there making money again when they're getting older. Yeah, I might agree with you to a certain extent with the like the Star Wars, oh, no. for example. You agree with me all you know? the time. I know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, and the older woman is probably not getting as many roles for sure. So unless they're like Meryl Streep or somebody who's just got that reputation, or it ain't well, gonna matter. Look how many what's look, out there. Look how many Spider Man Aunt May's there been, right? You know, yeah. there's been like, so many MAs, and they probably thought that was three in our lifetime, I think. Yeah, and they probably thought that was Live the final action. role, and then all of a sudden they finally pick the final one, which has been in what two movies? Melissa, Melissa, Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei. Yeah. She's now the Aunt May, even though she's like hot Aunt May. I mean, she's supposed to be Aunt May, like Aunt B, like that's what you're thinking. She should look yeah. like not Aunt May, hot, looks good in a bathing suit. No, what are you doing? That's not Spider Man's aunt. What? There's no way. And this is funny. Think about this. Okay, so now technically she could have been Aunt May because in the traditional Spider-Man origin, Uncle Ben dies. So, and I think it's not going to matter that we spoil this because no way home has been out for whatever. What? Uh, Uncle Ben dies? No, no. See, he doesn't even exist in this Tom Holland Spider-Man universe. Oh, no. So now you have an Aunt May who can technically grow old for years into the role. And then they kill her off at the last one. So she will always remain young, and she will not gray because Marissa of, Tomei will not be at me Speaking of that, I finally saw that movie with the Spider-Man universe. Everybody. Did you? And what did you think? <laughs> what What are we doing? Some have said that is the best Spider-Man. What are we? Oh. <laughs> why are we spinning this different way of like bringing everybody who's been a Spider-Man, and that the oldest Spider-Man. Uh, what's his name? He looks old. Toby Maguire. Yeah, he didn't. He looked old. He did. He was. A, he looked like. He was. His, a, he looked tired. He, he was looked, a grizzled Spider Man. Yeah, he looked like a tired Toby Maguire. He's tired Spider Man. But see this. What's what's funny? It's like the in in there's numerous Spider Man futures, whatever. And he and one of them he marries Aunt Mary Jane. They have a daughter. So they ask him about his relationship. Clearly, he's old. Like you're saying, they ask him about his relationship with his own MJ, and he says it's complicated. It's comp- if it's complicated still, and you're now you're a 40 year old Spider Man, probably not going to work. <laughs> how many more years do you need to fuck around with Mary Jane before you know? Okay, she's the one. Uh, that's true. I think because like- they, they didn't pluck him right from when he was fucking dancing in Spider Man Three. Clearly, he looks like he's been around for a while. Yeah, he looks so a little, what the hell has he yeah. been doing since we last seen him? <laughs> His hair's all oily. It's like, dude, do you wash your hair? Do you do anything he's with been, your hair? <laughs> he's 
<laughs> hanging around a lot of alleys in the meantime. Yeah, just, doesn't know. Keeps dropping his costume in the trash can. Yeah, doesn't what, know if he wants to be Spider Man anymore. What are you going? What are you combing your hair with Crisco? Your hair's all greasy looking, dude. <laughs> I think I like the middle Spider Man. I never watched that one with that other character. You like Garfield? Yeah, I think he he's was. He's my least, least favorite one. No, oh, I thought he was pretty good. I think he's a good character. He was just real goofy. It's like, I think, I, you know what? I just took it. I know this sounds really bad. I don't know if we talked about this, Ramrock. Uh, I felt like he had brain damage. <laughs> like, he just, <laughs> like, maybe he got hit, clobbered by way too many villains. And no, he, just he was felt a surfer. Like his, he was like a surfer type yeah. of Spider Man. He was a little more clowny. Maybe. I think he just got clobbered too many times. So I just <laughs> pretended he had brain damage. He was like, that's why he was a little bit goofier. He was like, no, you know, not offending anybody with brain damage, but he maybe got knocked around a few times being You're Spider-Man. Not offending, and... I'm not offending you with brain damage. Okay, thank <laughs> yes. you. My uncle has brain damage. You know, it's all we need now in this day and age. I used to love me podcast. You listened before they started talking about people with brain damage. Yeah, that's it. Don't like you anymore. That's it. So my... So my... So that's, I think I watched that one during the uh, during the, before the summer. I finally watched the Spider Universe, but I so did, you just didn't like it, or you just like I just, all those I nostalgic? Know. Yeah, I just didn't understand why we had to bring back everybody, and then it just make it it just made it look like now why are there so many Spider Mans, and then there's so many different universes, and then there's characters, and then it kind of just made it. I don't know. It made fun of. To me, it just I don't know, it took away the illusion of Spider-Man. I mean, we were just trying to find I think, we, we were trying to find the right Spider-Man, and then all of a sudden, we're finding like different Spider-Mans. And I don't know, it just I don't know. It just it just. Kinda, I think this was their only. Chance they should have brought back the been, should brought back the Electric okay. Company Spider-Man just out of nowhere, just from the seventies, just the Spider <laughs> Spider-Man. He from falls Ele- out of the fucking every, sky for no every, reason. Every every yeah, yeah every doesn't Spider-Man doesn't say a word. Where's the Spider-Man he talked? TV series from the 80s? Why don't you bring him back, too? Is there any other spider man you want to bring? Yeah, in? yeah. Well, no, that was a, was that the late 70s. Remember him? That yeah. was all serious, that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah throw him back. Just in. throw him back in. You bring everybody back. Yeah. I mean, how many spider man I don't know if there was an Aunt May in his universe. It would have been Maybe funny. She was too old. It would have been funny if there was, like, a cartoon Spider-Man that we used to watch, too. That all of a sudden, the cartoon Spider-Man's there since... They made fun dude, of the, the other Spider-Man. Spider-Man and his amazing friends was a shit, dude. I remember that. I grew up with that. He had the two X-Men with him. His amazing and friends. Had, yeah, had Firestar and Iceman. Yeah, it was like, that was a shit, dude. Oh, Iceman. Yeah, Iceman was awesome. Yeah, Iceman. And he lived in a, I think, in a dorm or something with uh, yeah, Iceman. And, and, Iceman was like and a fucking co- Firestar. It's like a college athlete. And he's just hanging out and just making ice at the parties. Everybody's like, dude, you're the best, yeah. Iceman. What do you think, yeah. since we're talking about Iceman... Yes. You did not see the new Top Gun, but Iceman was in it. Ooh. He was in it, and they dubbed his voice, I think. Because you, know so uh, you know he can't talk. So who can't talk? Iceman. Val Kilmer has throat cancer in real life. Oh, so they dubbed in somebody and, who sounds well, like Val, they, Val no, Kilmer? No, but they... They portrayed him in the movie with throat cancer. Oh, okay. That's so they actually played off real life. And yeah, did they did. Him in there. So he was there. He's the reason why Maverick had to come back, to Top Gun. Interesting. And be a be a pilot instructor. But the Top Gun movie was portrayed to me as the best Top Gun movie, which was only one. The best <laughs> Top Gun movie ever. <laughs> And I think it's because we don't realize how cool Top Gun was back in the 80s. It was big in 84. I think it was 84 Top Gun came out. And that movie. Hey, I, what? I'm just I'm not going to sound biased, but dude, wasn't everything cooler back in the 80s? I mean, that's why everybody loves it so much. Once we're gone, the people remembered it, obviously, it may not have the same. You know, part in history, but as long as we're people still alive who lived through the 80s, or there's going to be just that nostalgic love for it, I think, until we're gone, because it just was the coolest decade to live through because we had Nintendo debuting, freaking uh, <laughs> all the coolest movies, just everything was good. So the clothes and hairstyles, maybe not, but... You know, well, that's, again, it was the style back again, then, you know. But. I don't know if that's it, but the, the, 
So you so you, so you think I'm biased because the eighties? Because we I grew up we in the eighties. No, but we lived through it. But yeah. Top Gun, Top Gun. Every time, to Top Gun, Iron Eagle, all these movies came out about being a fighter pilot. And it was, as soon as you watch those movies, I mean, Iron Iron Eagle. Watch Iron Eagle again, dude. Iron Eagle is badass. Is that with Louis Gossett Jr.? Yeah, when the kid just steals a plane in the Air Force base and just flies across the to Saudi Arabia and rescues his dad. I mean, <laughs> it was that was that easy. All you need to do oh, any any just, Chuck Norris movie up against anything that we've watched in the past twenty some years. All I you, don't think all you, you could compete with no, that. Like, the, what was it? The yeah, 80s, missing in action or yeah. whatever shit he come come at. You had like twelve of those movies you or just, some shit like that. Yeah, it's like even the recent Rambo movie had tunnels built so you could just get across and fight people. I mean. That's the movies. That's the that's what it's supposed to be like. Totally unrealistic. Some kid is not taking a plane. Maverick, at the age of whatever he is, is not flying a fighter jet and blowing up some um whatever he blows up some uh, uh nuclear plant, and he blows it up. He blows up like a silo or something, and then it's full of like uranium, <laughs> and he just flies in and does it, and he's just no no rust. You know, he's got no problem. He can just do this. And in the in the movie, the movie itself, Top Gun just took everything from the original Top Gun and just made it into this Top Gun. Instead of a volleyball scene, they're in football with no clothes, no shirts on running around and jeans. Um, the fighter pilot part where the dude je- uh, gesturing them are, are are following them around and, and they're they're doing the testing where the the guy, the, the the trainers are the bad guys, and they're just blasting. There everybody. was a character called Jester in there. Yeah, not in this one, the old one. And oh, then all the of a sudden, one, that yeah. this one, Tom Cruise is the fighter. He's the trainer, and he's just getting all the new recruits. He's the best. And you're thinking to yourself, it just that's that just it, they just took a movie and remade it. And the thing is, is they did it because this generation has no idea what the old movies like. Exactly. That's the same thing with the Star Wars Force Awakens. People, oh, we just love it because it's not the prequels, but it was the same formula of the first hour, so it was nothing new. So the whole point would, if George Lucas stayed on, a lot of people were maligning him, he would have done something different. He already had the treatment, and they decided to go back to what was comfortable and nostalgic for people. And people at first thought, oh, Force Awakens is so great, whatever. I just don't think that movie holds up very well. I wasn't a fan so, when so it came out. Do you and, think, and it just doesn't hold up. None of those newer so ones. So who do you talk to? Who do you talk to and find out like their movie reviews? It's people our age, right? It's people. Yeah, we so, would talk. So we talk, talk to our coworkers, our friends, family. So, so when you talk to younger people, do you see movies that are, um, like a younger generation, like my boys? That's they, a cool question. They, yeah, I got. They I got see some these movies. Yeah. They see these movies, and they're like, "This is the best movie ever," because they've never seen the old movies. They've never. Yeah. Seen, so there's. They've never. There's seen. an example of that. Okay. So when I was staying with my brother and my niece and nephew, and we watched the old Pet Cemetery, I don't know if it was before or after the the new one because we've seen that one too, and they just they didn't they didn't find it. We love, I mean, we love, I don't know about you. I love Pet Cemetery. It just had a great feel. It had Herman Munster in it, Fred Gwynn. He was in there, Church the Cat, Gage. Everything was great. They changed a little bit in the new one and had more effects or whatever the hell was in there. But the, the first one's a classic. Hmm. I, you what you compare the two, they'll probably say they like the newer Pet Cemetery, even though you know, it wasn't that great, anyways. But the old one, just even though it doesn't have all those effects, it still holds up to me. It does, at least. And Hmm. I thought that was a that I thought that was a better pet cemetery, if you ask me. Not well, just because it came first, it, it just had a better it, feel. And you know what? And when you just when you watch older horror movies, they don't have any fucking boundaries. These movies sometimes are so scary because they relate. Like this shit could be happening. Like kids, yeah, because you, sh- you show too much in the new ones. The the old ones kind of kept it. You don't know what the hell's around the corner. You don't need to know. You just know that it's scary or freaky. There's or the not, fuck, there's hey, not a lot of gore. The corner? There's not a lot of gore. There's a lot of maybe this stuff could happen. Now it's like it's just yeah, I don't know. It's just movies are always, especially movies now. They're just they're they're always about goblins and ghosts and creepy fucking like nothing scares my kids more than a, a person walking backwards upside down. 
because of the <laughs> whatever that con- movie, The Conjuring, or whatever the hell it is, when someone's oh, walking yeah. down the stairs on their hands and they're like making all the weird twisting noises. <laughs> That but freaks it, kids out. But, but isn't the, me, doesn't look but real isn't at all. the Exorcist? Yeah, but is yeah, I agree with you. Is it the Exorcist more terrifying? Oh yeah. That could really be a possessed little girl, and the effects were fairly simple compared to t- you know today's day and age. I'm not talking about the one where they updated and they did their spider walk down the stairs, although that was a little creepy too. But that's what I just mean. Just everything in that everything in that room was just freaking. All they did was have them in a cold meat locker breathing. Like it's ice cold and they're in a, you know, and probably child abuse, you know, so I forget how old the actress was during that, but, but uh pea soup have a voice distorter and then they have like probably a dummy to turn her head around, obviously, because the actress saying it's not going to do that. You don't think she did that? <laughs> she, I heard she could do that. She did it. She like twisted her neck. <laughs> She's quadruple jointed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it's, it's movies that. Maybe it's just the new – I mean, maybe my parents said the same thing. Like, dude, you know, you would have liked Wizard of Oz. We don't need color. Why do we need color in movies now? What's going on? I don't remember these special effects back when the end of the world movies were out. They were all real. With, you could see the string of the UFO. This shit was a lot scarier in black and white. What the hell we need this shit for? Orson <laughs> Welles was real. The real scary guy. You don't realize how scary it was back in the day. Yeah. We didn't even need video to be scared. His <laughs> audio wore the world, scared the shit out of us back in the day. Jimmy the Jimmy the uh, guy in the movie box would just crank that movie reel so fast. It was such a great time. We didn't need no special effects or fancy <laughs> chairs that reclined to watch movies. So well, let me tell you let me tell you this. This because this goes back to our earlier conversation. So you obviously remember drive-in movie theaters, right? And then they evolved into sitting down in them. So what sitting, would be Sitting the... down and driving movie, drive-ins? Yeah, so you remember the drive-ins and then the movies evolved to movie theaters where you're not oh. going with your car and your family. Yeah. So obviously that was an evolution. So why would you not be in favor of like the evolution of digital at home where, okay, you're right, you, maybe you wait. Well, how about you charge a little bit more and you and you allow the people to watch in the the comfort of their home. So you maybe do charge. Of the, you do charge more. Well, they do. I mean. They they charge. They charge they, almost thirty bucks for you to watch it at home. Yeah. So why? So are you okay with that? No, because that movie, because what are what are movie theaters? How are they going to make money? Why? Are, what's the point of having them? Well, not everybody's everybody, going to pay thirty dollars for Black Widow or some maybe there's like not enough so. though. Maybe there's not enough people to pay thirty bucks. Yeah, but if they do want to do it, why shouldn't they have the option? Like, you got four friends; they don't mind going in together and watch a movie. So for you're saying bucks. it's becoming movies are now pay per view. So pay per view yeah, fights, pay per view tickets, pay per view everything is now movies are pay per view at home. Everything. Well, to to use my example, I use with the theaters changing kind of everything evolves whether we want to or not everything is changing and evolving before you would have to buy a, an album or record or tape and then a cd and then now it's just buy a song if you want to off the things everything got changed the game was changed so to speak with napster and all that other stuff that changed the game so with everything evolving to digital streaming and stuff this is i think just natural consumption evolution so you know, I, I'm not saying that the movie theaters will not still not have a place, but if people do want to stream this stuff at home and not have somebody yelling out or crying, baby crying, because I've watched horror movies with idiot kids walking through, you know, through the aisle, then why not give them the ch- the chance to do that? And then, then you got the people who are afraid and scared as hell to go to theater, so whether it be because of a virus or a so maniac. What tells shooter. you that? What tells you there's not? What tells you there's not? There's that. That's not happening. Like, what do you mean that, that? How do you know that's not that's not already in the works? People are already going to buy movies to see. That's what I mean. So, like when you were saying, yeah, they should wait. I'm not sure they should wait, but I think the business model has got to evolve. You got to let it evolve. So, yeah, does it involve the person at home paying more? Because conceivably, like you said, it, 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 conceivably it's like a pay per view, so you could have six or seven people in a room or more, or whatever, watching a film. So. Yeah, in theory, should it be a premium charge to watch it immediately upon release? Sure, but it should still be allowed, I think. 
I believe I don't think that it's not. I don't think it's not allowed. There's a place. I don't to think it. it's not allowed. I think it's. Well, no. Like you're Batman, you're you're Batman, finding. You had to, you well, had to wait. It did. It didn't take forty five days. It did. Oh well, shit. Forty five days didn't take very long for that crap to come out, though. Think about how it is yeah, right I'm now. I'm talking instantaneously. You're, though. you're not going to see. You're not going to see. Well, because they're going to get as much money as they can. Because the movie theaters pay for these movies. You know, they pay yeah. for they pay the rights to show these. But you you are you know that um, that Batman came out quick. And you know that some yeah, of these, some of these movies come out on HBO normal. Max quick, and yeah, quicker than they, they normally used to. So right. I think evolution wise would say there will be probably a day of release, but yeah, you're going to have to play, pay probably nothing. I'm sure you're going to have to pay more, but it it should be offered at least for those people that want to to watch it. In the oh, comforter at all. I mean, well, you there's get, some movies you I would get wait on for. it. You get on it, MC. You get on it and start <laughs> offering it, it. Just think it's gonna happen. I mean, like I'm, I'm probably not gonna go to see Thor because Thor has gotten so goofy now as a Marvel character in the theater. But if you charge a slight more for me to watch it, maybe on Disney Plus, if I paid my buddy who's you know shares this Disney Plus, maybe I maybe I would. Would treat him to see it by buying the movie to see it if it was a little 15 or something in the comfort of your home or do you go and, and pay it in the theater or, or not see the difference is not seeing it at all I don't so, know you maybe just stand yeah. on this right now MC is challenging everybody out there not to see movies when they come out and wait <laughs> until they show up on Netflix oh now you're paying you're paying me as like telling uh, you know we don't want the movie theaters or the celebrities and actors to make money yes mc is a bad guy <laughs> he's a bad person who doesn't believe in movie houses anymore do you yeah, think, I think uh, it's just you, evolution i think has got to be allowed at some point because so i'm I, I don't mind streaming certain things at home other things i agree with you i think the ambiance of going to see some but because everything was so packed when we went to see Doctor Strange, I had to see it in 3D. I could have done without paying no more to see it in 3D. I would have much rather you talking watch. about I, this I would have been, recent Doctor Strange. Yeah, the Doctor Strange too. We Oof. couldn't even we couldn't even get the showings we want. It was so packed. People love Marvel, and but that and, came you know, out. That a, came out on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's out there. It's on Disney Plus now. I saw it, but at the time, yeah. What would you well, think about? Uh, let me. Well, let me get into it. I'm still talking about Top Gun. So my okay. idea of Top Gun is if you're an 80s guy, wait for it to come out yeah. so you can watch it at home with MC. We'll sit next to you with $8 popcorn. <laughs> if if for yeah, some, bring, if for some reason <laughs> if for some reason you need to go see it, it is pretty cool to watch it in the theaters because of the jets and all the fighter pilot stuff. It is real. They did do the airplane scenes for real. They were in the plane. It was pretty Tom cool. Cruise was really in the pot. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was cool to watch. <laughs> it was a good movie. I think it just it just not the best. If you want to see Top Gun, watch the original. Now, getting into Doctor Strange. Never seen it. Never wanted to see Doctor Strange. I watched it with my wife. It was probably the boringest, longest. Ooh. <laughs> movie for two hours and 17 minutes i watched this movie and i just didn't really get it and all i kept seeing when i saw wandavision is the tv series wandavision on disney <laughs> and when i kept seeing it i kept thinking ah. and she and i'll tell you this it was probably one of the scariest marvel movies i've seen I gotta that was give you that. By Sam Raimi. Yeah, it was pretty scary. I mean, the they, Evil Dead. That's why they, he did that little gag with Bruce Bruce Campbell in the hand. Oh well, it was painted out to be a pretty. It was pretty evil. I would say that this is probably one of the eviler movies I've seen, especially when she killed Professor Xavier. Dude, that was pretty creepy. And for that yeah, to be on well, Dis, and for that to be on Disney. It was pretty. Well, there's uh, there's was, some motherfuckers out there right now. What the fuck? I didn't watch Doctor Strange yet. I know it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: she breaks Xavier's <laughs> neck like, like she breaks that bitch. And the weirdest part about it is, it well he didn't see it coming, so that just means his powers suck. So but, he's supposed to be like an Omega level mutant. I know Wanda's supposed to be like the in some most circles i think in people's minds the most powerful mutant of all 
because she can go basically ape shit, fucking change reality. Oh, but it was pretty. Now I would say that part of the movie it was pretty cool, and the girl, yeah, who, and it the had girl, the alternate, and, and the girl who played the, the yeah, Avengers, yeah, and the girl who played the ice girl, whatever they wanted to call her, she was pretty good. I like Doctor ice. Strange. I have never really seen him. I've only seen him in other movies, so I've never seen his first show, his first movie. Um, I like I like the character. I think it's pretty cool, um, but it was just long, and it just continued. I don't know. It didn't really keep me on the edge of my seat. And Wanda, I think I, just, I would I have liked to have I, seen more alternate versions uh, of of things because that's what you kind of got the impression of from the trailer. Like he might have encountered more Doctor Stranges or more universes out there. And even that and that part was weird coolest too. Coolest line from the trailer wasn't even in there. Like things got out of hand. So they now didn't even have that in there. Now that the you vibe. brought it up, though, when he was his little skeleton self, that was freaking just like Evil Dead. Yeah, because I mean, Sam Raimi. Yeah, when he was talking, when he was He's talking, the one that did that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's why you got that know. feel from Evil Dead because yeah, it was Sam Raimi who directed it. It was a scary movie though. I would say it's probably one of the scarier Marvel movies. Like I said, I've seen. It was pretty intense. Didn't you think so? Yeah, I mean, it had a cool scary because you didn't know what the hell was going to happen. So when you're watching it for the first time, what's Wanda going to do? They they pretty much. Because she was possessed by the dark hold. I mean, and she's gone crazy in Marvel Comics, so it's not like this is unprecedented. But yeah, you pretty much who's she gonna kill? Who's she gonna to I mean, they kind of changed the premise a little bit because she was trying to have her own reality in the comics. And in this one, she's just trying to find a reality where she can live with the kids. But you know, for the most part, it it stayed consistent with, you know, hmm. stuff that has happened to Wanda in the comics. So yeah, it, it was how much, was, original how much was yeah, popcorn? It was a little freaky. How much was popcorn in the theater when you I went? Didn't, in? I don't, didn't buy popcorn. You didn't. Did you bring in? Did you, no, hide, I, did you hide, I, hide the eight dollar popcorn <laughs> in your shirt sleeves? I, I, pro- I probably <laughs> snuck in some snacks. If we're being honest, I know I don't believe that's a crime. Oh. <laughs> MC but, Brown uh, lives at one two six four seven North Forest <laughs> Avenue. Um, in uh, Jungle Hill, ten, uh, <laughs> Texas. So when you go, so when you go to the theaters, <laughs> did you sit in the comfortable? Was it in the uh, the Cinemax, the IMAX? Do you have that theater bar? So you're at? when we, so I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. So when we, I took, I think I the two friends I went with originally to see Batman. They were they hadn't gone to this theater before. It was like the Cinemark, and uh, and it was they were like, hey, these chairs are real comfortable. So they were okay because they they didn't know what to expect. So they were happy to go back. So. Because maybe that was March and then Strange was a little, what was May or whatever it was. Um, so now people are more out and about. So I think maybe we we're underestimating the Marvel Universe too. So we didn't reserve our seats or anything. We just tried to walk up to the, the window and, you know, we got there early and we had to wait a few showings before. And then we had to pay for the. 3D version before we even get in. But what's it like? In, were well, what's it like in 3D? Was it creepy? I mean, there's a lot of stuff um, flying at the screen, so I'm assuming it must. Yeah, been. it was it was interesting. I don't, it, I could have done without it because 3D don't really do anything for me. But yeah, some of the stuff was kind of cool to see. But it, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have rechose to go see it in 3D. We just didn't have a choice that either we were seeing it in 3D or we. We weren't going to see it anytime, you know, and, until we went into the afternoon. But it was still the cheaper 3D showing, so it wasn't like astronomical what we paid. But um, yeah, I mean, hmm. I, I enjoyed it. I, I will say I enjoyed it. I mean, I the, the first Doctor Strange. I don't know if you've seen that or if you remember that. I didn't that was, see it. Yeah, yeah. I could, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. You don't have to watch it to enjoy this one. And I, I think if you watch that one, you'd probably like it even less than you'd like Doctor Strange too. So what's up? What's coming up now? When is Black Adam coming out with The Rock? So that I want to say is October, maybe. Oh, it's still far away. It's not even out of the summer. Yeah. No, DC push. DC is going. I mean, we got a little time. I think maybe to talk about this, but for most people at large, don't know. DC has got gone through that merger. So Warner Brothers, who's there's been a lot of idiots at Warner Brothers that have been kind of screwing up the DC movie franchise. It's been like a tug of war. So now that there's a new president in place because of the merger with at and I think, or Discovery, I think is what the name is. So apparently they want to restructure everything and they because they had a different Superman. This was going to be like an Af- 
African American Superman was going to be a movie. Now they don't know if Cavill will come back, the the guy who was doing Man of Steel. Hmm. But apparently, there's a Flash movie that's supposed to reset the universe a little bit and basically take all the Zack Snyder type of characters and put them off to the side. Bring in Michael Keaton, Batman, and then bring in a Superwoman instead of a Superman and make Batgirl the Batman, so to speak. Because I saw the I saw Keaton the super, I saw the Superwoman old. thing. I think that might be kind of cool. I don't know. I just, I'm not really digging it. I'm like, I don't think we really got Justice League and the amount of movies that it really needed. Like, not to make a comparison to Avengers, but Justice League being a huge DC fan over anything, I want to see a few movies with Superman and Batman. I don't want to automatically push them aside. Now we have Superwoman and Batgirl. Like, what the fuck? We, we, we only technically got one Justice League movie. Now they changed it into Zack Snyder's version. I don't know if you've seen that. And they made a four-hour cut of that, but that doesn't take the place of hey, there could have been two more movies right. in that franchise. So, plus, I like Ben Affleck. I, at first, I didn't like a, a uh, we, popular. We actor talked about Batman, we talked but, about this, yeah. So you don't yeah. like so, so you're we, not you're not into the new Batman then. No, if you'd be honest with you, I would much have rather seen a Batman versus Deathstroke one that was supposed to be directed by uh, Ben Affleck, and uh, that was supposed to happen. That was. Uh, I don't know what the hell is going on with Ben Affleck of why he, because I don't know who's to blame if it's somebody interfering with the movie franchises or what the heck's going on. But I know something happened to make him disenfranchised, and I know he can't. He's supposed to come back for this Flash movie, but apparently that Ezra Miller keeps getting in trouble with the law. He's yelling at people, assaulting people, so they they need a new Flash anyways because. Even if this gets released, he's not going to be Flash going forward. So, so it's five, all five freaking mess. Five minutes left. <laughs> Ob one, worth it, or was it a or was it a flop? You go. I wouldn't say it's a flop, but I feel like you definitely would need more of the Ob one and and Darth Vader focus. I think those were the best parts of it. They introduced. I going into it, I wouldn't have thought that the young Leia would have had that much screen time. And, and to be honest with you, I really didn't care much about the Inquisitors they used. I mean, they did Inquisitor stuff in the Rebel series. And this is just supposed to be around, uh, be about Obi Wan and, and Darth Vader. And I would have felt like we would have gotten a lot more flashbacks or stuff with Hayden Christensen, and he was barely in it. You know, and hopefully he's more in the Ahsoka Tano series, which is coming out later this year, I think, or next early next year. But yeah, I don't want to say it was a flop because I think it did really well. People streaming it. I think they need definitely need Dave Filoni, the the understudy of George Lucas, to take over the hmm. the uh, the next series. I think, and I think that's going to happen because I think there's just much like I was talking about with the DC comic stuff. There's a kind of a tug of war with Lucasfilm and Disney stuff too. So. I think you'll see a better if they do a season two. You'll see probably a better uh, series next time. What did you think? I would say that the Obi Wan movie it was kind of a boring series. I didn't like how they painted Obi Wan yeah. Kenobi as a weak. They painted all the Jedi's as weak and trying to hide. Yeah. And I just think that it could have probably panned out more. And like you said, dog in here. Oh God. So I think it I think it had a lot more to offer than uh, here's little bells huh. like a jingle bell. Yeah, I know it's like either you were shaking something off or <laughs> no, this dog's in here. So so to me, to me, I think it I think it just starts it, farting. It, it just lacked it just lacked it lacked a lot of uh, uh, interest. And like you said, I think the Princess Leia character kind of they they really focused a lot on her, which made me think that they're trying to build up to something else. So I think that's gonna have yeah. But again, like I told you, it just I didn't like it that Obi Wan was so weak the entire season and then all of a sudden at the end he became super powerful. And I didn't like it that we didn't that Darth Vader was just like so I don't know, he was like over the top Jedi. He was like super Jedi. And so it I don't know. And I yeah. like I, 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 he just had like superhuman like superpowers as a Jedi. Like more well, you than have you to think. think. Yeah, you have to think, why are they fighting so slow? And I, you know it's why, because Alec Guinness is older and the guy there, they have Darth Vader in a suit he can't do anything with in the original Star Wars. So it's like it would maybe one more battle between them if they did do that in a season two, not having them battle every couple episodes, but one more 
final battle that can explain, oh, hey, Vader is severely damaged again. He's not going to be the same power level he's going to be, you know, but then again, you know, you bring him back to Rogue One, he's still tearing those guys apart and and right yeah. before he catches Leia's ship. So it's like you can't make him too weak from a battle with Obi-Wan, but Did yeah, it, the, Vader, as you see him in the, the original trilogy, is definitely not the same Vader. No, this Vader was like badass, so... He yeah. just he just had he just I don't know you just in this Vader I would be more fearful of him if I was everybody else because he just he would just seem ruthless. So I think I, that scene with the slap the slashed helmet was awesome. That part because, was that was you know, that was a cool part to see, and I also thought I also thought the little uh, Jedi the evil Jedi's that were running around hunting Jedi's they were pretty cool. I like those characters. Yeah, they didn't explore them as much. See, they 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 went one with wet one. They created that character Reva for the series, but they already had a whole plethora of those Inquisitors that existed. You could have focused on them. Yeah. You know, I know they were a lot of this stuff was done in animation. It's the same thing. They had Ahsoka, who used to be Anakin's Padawan. She also fought him in the series and sliced over half of his, you know, helmet on the other side. So they did it. They did a lot of stuff they did in the, the cartoon that not everybody might have seen. But uh, yeah, I, think I thought it was all right. Still I thought it was. All, I thought it was all right. I want to see the I want to see the origin of Chewbacca. Bring that on. Uh, you did in, <laughs> in episode three. Remember, he was on his, his he was hanging out with Yoda back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> with Chewie. Oh, and Solo. Remember, he's in the pet. You know, he's in the pit with Solo. Yeah. Which apparently they're supposed to de-age Harrison Ford, and I guess that's supposed to be a series coming up. Another, so they're, they're another probably going to Han Solo, in, 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 but it's going to be actually be Harrison Ford portraying him, and they'll they're going to de-age him apparently. At this point, nothing beats Mandalorian, hands down. Probably the best series on Disney Plus is Mandalorian. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, that Luke Skywalker thing was was pretty freaking awesome. I'm not going to lie. Oh yeah, yeah I think that... I think Mandalorian man, nothing beats oh, Baby Yoda. Mean. Baby Yoda. Don't you remember the finale of The Mandalorian? Yeah. Where Luke showed up? That was fucking yeah, awesome. That was pretty that was, cool. That was yeah. Way, yeah. That so was, I mean, yeah, you're right. That Man- all took place in Mandalorian. And Mandalorian. Uh, some say the, the best episodes of Boba Fett were the two that focused on The Mandalorian. But Yep. I think Boba Fett turned into Mandalorian. That's where they went with it. They might as <laughs> well make more Mandalorians. Well, that was a good episode go. of recatching what we've been watching. And just remember... There is a petition going around with MC. He is going to have you out there. If you want to watch TV at home and see all the movies, sign his petition to watch at home. And you'll it's you'll It's going to happen whether I do it or not, buddy. I'll tell you that. It's going to be Xbox at home with MC. You're going to have those little Xbox, Xbox characters. So. Roku, whatever Netflix, everything's going to have home. All Just right. Buy your own channel. That's all right, MC. Happens. Well, it was a good time right, catching buddy. up with you. Hopefully, next time we bring the Ramrock on, we hang out on me podcast. Drag him listen. away from his weights in Germany. Check the bell, subscribe, and check us out. Me podcast, you listen. Yes. Coming back at you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.